What's up everyone, it's Wabachaw, and I wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk about the build that I've been playing in the Parandus Hardcore League, the Iron Commander build, and, and the reason why I am not going physical over elemental. Uh, I made that video last week as like kind of a build showcase. I'm currently level 93, and I'm going to be level 94 soon, and I think I'm actually going to try to get level 100 with this character. It's turned out to be really strong and really enjoyable, and there are some questions that have come up, you know, from viewers, from comments on YouTube, comments on Reddit, and I kind of want to address a couple things about Iron Commander. And the first thing I want to say is Iron Commander is not Whispering Ice. Whispering Ice is a great unique, and so is Iron Commander, but Whispering Ice... I feel like this is where a lot of the, the I don't want to say confusion, but the, the feeling that people get that they feel like they should be scaling their decks to the absolute limit. They want to get 1000 dexterity. They want to get that physical damage. And it's just, it's just not Whispering Ice. I mean, Whispering Ice, the, the stat that scales your damage also scales your life. So you really get a lot of benefit from using Whispering Eyes to its fullest potential. This is not really the same with uh, Iron Commander. You don't get anything out of decks other than evasion percentage and accuracy. So, so really, like, I, I, the way that I view Iron Commander is not the way you should view uh, Whispering Eyes. Instead, I view it as a better version of Ancestral Bond. And Ancestral Bond, as we all know, is the passive um, in the upper left side of the tree by Templar that gives you one additional totem. And the great thing about Iron, and, and about that, one additional totem for totem builds is so strong that Ancestral Bond has the downside of stopping you from dealing any damage. This doesn't mean that you can't get power charges or you can't curse things or you can't do anything like that if you use Ancestral Bond, but that's a pretty big downside for Ancestral Bond. But the way that I view Iron Commander is this is a bow that enables you multiple versions of Ancestral Bond that still allows you to do deal some damage. As it turns out, you don't really need to deal damage because your Siege Ballistas deal, <laughs> they do fine on their own, but for me, Iron Commander is just about getting to those breakpoints of getting one additional totem. And I believe that 600 Dexterity is the sweet spot. 600 Dexterity will allow you to use four totems, four Siege Ballistas at, at once. So this is essentially two leading uh, when you're clearing maps and then two trailing. And what this does is it creates a very large uh, area of coverage, a very large AoE, and it cleans up stragglers very well. Uh, there have been many times, I have never played a build where the build has cleared maps down to zero, mobster, or zero monsters as much as this build has. And that's kind of nice, you know, it's not really that big of a deal, because if you just clear well, you don't really have to worry about that. But Four, four totems feels plenty when it comes to clearing maps. And then when it comes to boss killing, four totems, you know, essentially is, you know, that really boosts your single target DPS. At this point right now, I'm at about 61k DPS per totem self-buffed. So when I have Onslaught, when I have Val Haste, when I have everything going, all my charges, my totems are dealing 61k DPS per totem and that is putting me at over 240k single target dps and this is great for killing bosses it's a little hit or miss sometimes but between the clear speed and survivability and everything else going on for it i'll gladly trade off the sometimes iffy uh you know boss killing potential of the build because because it's not really that big of a deal you could still kill bosses just fine sometimes it just takes a little bit longer but you know it, when it comes to getting 800 dexterity and getting a fifth totem or a thousand dexterity and getting a sixth totem you really have to ask yourself um 
am I am I benefiting from this fifth and sixth totem? Maybe you'd benefit from the fifth totem when it comes to clearing maps, but four totems seems to do a pretty good job. And yeah, you would get a little bit more damage in boss fights when you get those fifth and sixth totems. But are you going to be able to sit there and put down five totems, right? Like, are you going to sit down or sit there and be able to do that immediately? The placement speed for Siege Ballista is pretty fast, especially between Totemic Zeal, the quality on the gem, the stats on Iron Commander itself, and there's even a Helm Enchant that could get you more totem placement speed. If you really wanted to stretch out your tree a little bit more, you can get Totemic Mastery, which is just to the left of the Scion Life Box. But it's just, I don't feel like it's worth it. And there's there's a number of reasons, but because I if I could easily get 800 dexterity, I would go for five totems. But realistically, there's only about 450 to 500 dexterity that you could get on the tree. On the tree, this is this is before any of your gear. You know, this is before a black sun crest, which people constantly you know ask about and say you should do this or you should get this. But, you know, th that means that you're going to need anywhere from, you know, 100, you know, 150 to 300 decks just to get to those, you know, to, to a couple of uh, uh, breakpoints, you know, what I, what I call breakpoints. And, and it's just not worth it because Black Sun Crest really is not that good. Um, it, it takes away life. It takes away resistances it takes away a lot of stats that you would find yourself needing for you know at best 90 dexterity at best at best it will give you 90 to 110 dexterity at absolute best but that is not worth it if it doesn't get you to 800 dexterity it's not worth it if it doesn't get you to 1000 dexterity it's not worth it if it doesn't get you to 600 dexterity Right, and when it comes to getting a 600 dexterity, a helm like Starkonja's hood, or Devo even Devoto's devotion, is substantially better because you're getting so many other things, versus a Black Sun Crest. So, if th those are the reasons why I feel like 600 dex is kind of the sweet spot for Iron Commander. It gives you four totems, it gives you great uh, map clear speed, it gives you good uh, boss killing potential, it keeps you very mobile, and you don't have to change your tree, you don't have to do things that are too drastic just to get to that next to that next level, right? Now, but I also want to talk a little bit about using elemental damage versus physical damage. If your goal with Iron Commander is to only scale physical damage through the use of dexterity and getting 800 dex or 1000 dex, the damage is not going to be that good. The bow itself at 1000 dexterity barely cracks 200 physical DPS. That's pretty bad. That's pretty low. Even if you have 6 totems, that's pretty bad because that is hurting your individual totem whenever you need it to be an individual totem. When you place, when you have five, your five totems um, out, out already and you place your totem farther ahead, the way I have my totem set up right now, the way I have my build set up right now is when I put a Siege Ballista out, that initial Siege Ballista takes care of a lot on its own. It usually will clear packs on its own. I don't need multiple Siege Ballistas just to kill a single pack. I could use one. And if you just use dex to scale your physical damage, it just won't be that good. It will feel very lackluster. Now, there are some great ways to get dex or to get that physical damage though. Getting flat physical damage on every piece of jewelry is very good for Iron Commander uh, because of the way it works. In fact, at at 800 dexterity, if you had as much or if you had as much physical added physical damage to your tax as possible that spec would be pretty close to the spec that i'm playing right now it wouldn't be as good it would not the damage would be um 
the lo the low end or of the the low end of the damage would be higher, but the top end would be substantially lower. So what you're going to have is you're going to have a little bit more consistent damage. You're going to have lower consistent damage versus the elemental build, which we have higher uh, sp spiky damage. But the spiky damage plays very well into the whole crit aspect of this. So, and again, this kind of goes back to my point when I was talking about the Black Sun Crest. How much you have to do to get 800 dexterity will hurt your build. It will hurt it. You can, you could use a Fox Shade, which has added physical damage to attacks, and you could use, you could get physical damage on each piece, each piece of your jewelry. You could use a Mega Nords, but when you start doing all of that, it really starts to hurt, you know, your your build overall, especially in a hardcore setting. And then on top of that, um, as of right now, we're talking about if you have all these physical damage added to attacks, if you have these all and 800 dexterity, your DPS, and, I, and I, I've, I've ran the numbers multiple times, your DPS would be close to mine. It might even be a little bit better, except that I still have room to go. In the elemental version of this build, I, ha I still have uh, prefixes that I could get. I still have flat elemental damage that I could get added to my build. I still have, uh, you know, another, like I could get flat elemental on my amulet, on my rings, and I could also get wed. I could get weapon elemental damage on each of those pieces. And since I deal so much more elemental damage, I benefit much more from those rolls. You still benefit from those rolls as physical, but not nearly as much because I'm dealing over twice the amount of elemental damage compared to a physical build. And on top of that, on top of that, there's one other thing that makes this the 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 potential for elemental goes much much higher and it's because if you get level 21 gems, the DPS increase that you get from a level 21 physical to lightning compared to that of a level 21 added lightning, added lightning is way better with an additional level. That's absolutely way better than an additional level because it's adding more flat damage. So the cap for elemental is much, much higher. And on top of that, we are talking about comparing a 800 dexterity build with all flat physical damage on every single piece you could get and it being perfect mind you and we're comparing that to a 600 dexterity build that pretty much just relies on its gems and its auras i don't need my jewelry to have these rolls on it i don't need I don't need to wear a fox shade. I don't need to wear a Meganord's belt. The the one unique the there are a couple of uniques that I'm using, but any build would use it when it comes to Iron Commander. Any build would use a drill neck. Any build <laughs> clearly is going to use the Iron Commander. I I I feel very strongly that Star Conja's helm is actually the best in slot helm for Iron Commander. There's no other place you, that you could get the crit, the life, and the attack speed. If you're physical, you're definitely not going to be using Devoto's Devotion. If you're elemental, yeah, you could use Devoto's Devotion, but it has no life on it. So, so like, my gear and my passive tree is pretty standard when it comes to an elemental build. And I'm maximizing my DPS through the use of the Iron Commander bow and getting as many totems as possible. These are the reasons that when I initially saw Iron Commander and when I initially started to plan out a passive tree and I started to you know figure out how much decks that I could get, I was just sitting there thinking, man, the physical damage is not that high. How am I gonna scale it? How am I gonna scale this with decks? Because I can't you can't get that much decks. Not easily, not 
not in a in a way that isn't you know nearly impossible sure if you have if you have an unlimited budget and you're on standard and you could get all like perfect mirror worthy gear you could craft your all, all your own pieces yeah you could probably do that but this is not realistic in a fresh league this is not realistic in a hardcore setting too so I mean, when I when I originally looked at Iron Commander and I tried to get as much dex as possible, it immediately became apparent to me how unrealistic it was to scale its damage solely through the the physical portion of of the bow, through the physical the one to three physical damage added per attack per twenty five dexterity. Because again, going back to my one of my first points, it is not Whispering Ice. Whispering Ice has a fantastic uh, scaling property when it comes to intelligence, and it gives you a you know an increase to intelligence. Iron Commander does not, and all these things to me just immediately was like Elemental's the way to go. Ap Elemental is absolutely the way to go, and and this this is exactly why I have decided to go Elemental. The build is very strong. I'm enjoying it so much. This is the highest character I've actually ever played uh, solo. I've done a little bit of um, some group mapping between 92 and 93, but I've never actually pushed a character further than this because I usually get bored and I make another build. But this one, I'm really enjoying it. Um, you know, especially with using the, champ the champion ascendancy, I picked up myself a a six link assassin's garb and i've crafted it and you know i've done everything i can and the only the only way my character could get better right now is by getting perfect gear and as of right now you know having having these 61k dps totems and all my gems aren't leveled by the way like my i still have quality to get i still have um corruptions to get like i still have all these things to get and at 61k DPS per totem, solo, self-buffed, with four totems, that's incredibly strong. And the last thing I'm going to talk about before the end of this video, because this is a little bit longer than my normal ones, and I apologize for that. But a lot of people have asked me if I like it more than Shockwave Totem. Because as most people know, I've done a lot of stuff with Shockwave Totem. And I do. I enjoy this build much more than Shockwave Totem. Uh, and it's and it's because I'm doing a lot of the same things that I enjoy about Shockwave Totem. With Shockwave Totem, you scale, uh, you scale your cold damage and your lightning damage, so you shock and you shatter. I do the same exact thing with this build. And and on top of that, you know, some people I know some people had made some comments about how um, Shockwave Totem, when you place it down, it could clear the entire screen. Siege Ballista does the same thing, and it off screens. It off-screens a lot. It off-screens so much that I've had to change my loot filter to start making sounds for everything that I that I want to pick up. I never really had that problem before. Siege Ballista has a much larger uh, range than Shockwave Totem. It also keeps you a lot safer because if you have two Siege Ballistas that are half a screen behind you and a mob jumps onto you, if something leaps onto you, if a devourer pops up, the siege ballistas that are way behind you, well out of AoE range that Shockwave Totem would be, kills the mob instantly. And it actually turns out to be a much safer build. I am currently at, you know, I'm just under 6k HP with acrobatics, permanent fortify, and 50% evasion. That in itself is incredibly tanky. That is that is a very that's a very good build for survivability, and and yeah, um, I guess actually there's one more thing I want to say. I apologize. I, I forgot to mention this during the physical portion. One of the great things about the physical version of this build, if you do manage to get all the physical uh, added physical damage to your attacks through you know your jewelry and all your pieces. Um, Deadly Draw is actually a very, very good cluster for Siege Ballista because it gives a lot of attack speed. So that's a little side note. But yeah, that I just wanted to talk about Iron Commander a little bit. 
Um, you know, if you're interested in this and you wanted to hear my thoughts on it, um, I think Elemental is, I'm just going to wrap it up for everyone. I think Elemental is a much stronger choice because you're getting all your damage from the gems, not necessarily from your gear. Um, and that's that's definitely a lot better as a as a league starter. That's um, better, and it, it just turns out being better in the long run, right? And physical physical damage to attacks is on a lot of jewelry that people want. That gets actually pretty expensive. So I think elemental is a much stronger choice when you're looking at you know your first character and how you wanna how you wanna build it if you wanted to play Iron Commander, and that. And comparing it to Shockwave Totem, as you know, a lot of you know that I've played, uh, I do enjoy it more. It feels a lot safer. It feels a lot. Uh, it feels like it feels a lot more uh, reactive and just. It's a it's a very enjoyable build. I feel like this build has got a lot of flack recently, and I don't necessarily know why. I actually I, I know why. I I think that a lot of people are looking at this as if it's Whispering Ice, as if they should be scaling the damage through the the dexterity and it should be good but it it's just not so yeah those are my thoughts on iron commander elemental is great physical can be good if you get some like really good physical gear but it just won't be as good as elemental in the end and it's much more enjoyable in shockwave totem there's a lot more safety in it and you know hopefully Hopefully, more people start to play and see how enjoyable this is because it's a level 32 bow. It's very inexpensive, unique, and you can level with it. <laughs> as soon as you're level 32, you have two totems, and by like level 45, you have three totems. So it's it's a fun build. You guys should definitely check it out. If you have any questions, you could come visit me at my Twitch, twitch.tv slash Wabacha. You could also you know leave a comment in this video. Tell me what you think about it. And uh, yeah, I'm also going to be updating the forum post to be a little bit more of a guide. I'm not very good at that, to be completely honest. I'm much better at making videos and, and talking. Formatting text is kind of annoying on the forum. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching if you did. Have a good one. I'll see you later.